Um, hi, I'm um, Marcus Yanti. I'm at Stockholm University, and um, this I'm presenting joint work with uh, two researchers at the Uganda Revenue Authority um, uh, Research Department, Mili uh, Nalukwago and Ronald Waiswa, um, who are not to blame for anything silly I say. Um, and this is part of what I hope is um, a somewhat longer project um, about exploring the use of, of tax register data from Uganda for, for income distribution purposes. I start with top incomes because that's the, in, in some sense, least demanding um, thing um, to, to work with. So it's, it's a reasonable starting point, it seems to me. Now, the, the Uganda tax registers are potentially a very rich source of, of, uh, of um, data for, for income distribution um, research, but of course, because they cover uh, only um, formal activities by definition, almost, um, um, or, or the, the tax recipient part of this, it, it covers, um, in some, I mean, it covers formal activities also on the VAT part, but, but those activities may cover some informal sector workers as well, but all the same, I'm looking at the formal part. Um, so, it does work uh, for top income inequality with some reservations, um, but if one wants to look at the overall distribution, um, additional um, auxiliary sources are, are needed. I may say something about that at the end um, once we get there. Uh, so here I'll be just kind of demonstrating that the formal informal thing really is quite striking in, in Uganda, especially for somebody like me who mostly works with rich country uh, data. Um, I'll look at where Uganda places in inequality very quickly, but but then I'll talk a little bit about um, using these, these tax dates to, to study income inequality and, and in particular top income inequality and I'll then show you some results of, of what we, we find. There's a wider working paper which, which kind of covers um, everything that I'm saying here. Um, there is um, uh, quite a bit of research on, on inequality in, in income inequality in, in, in Uganda or economic inequality. Um, in Uganda, um, um, Paolo Brunori and, and um, uh, 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 Flavia Palmisana and Vito Peragina have, have several papers um, looking um, that do include um, Uganda, and they also uh, look at mobility. Tony Atkinson did a did a paper that's published as a working paper. It hasn't been uh, journal published, um, looking at, at multiple African countries in, in colonial times, um, which it, it is interesting to compare with. And, and the world, the, the Paris School of Economics project has uh, there's a I think it's still a working paper on looking at again many African countries largely in the distributional national accounts framework, but this also in, in, includes Africa. I have in the paper some comparisons to these. And then there's work done by the wider team. There are multiple papers using these same data. Um, I cite one particular one here, but, but there are uh, many papers that, that, that make use of these exact same data, but, but often looking at, at, at distinct questions, more policy relevant ones. Um, so the... Um, with some digging of, of Uganda national accounts data, it's, it's possible to, to look at the composition of, of, of GDP from the nominal and, and from the formal and, and informal uh, point of view. Here I show um, in, in two years chosen here because they coincide largely with the start and the end of the period I'm looking at for income distribution of, of within broad industry groupings of the of, of the composition of GDP by, by formal and informal sector. And, and you see that especially in agriculture, the formal kind of totally dominates, but, but, it's, but the informal really is, is, is very large um, also in, in, in industries and, and in services. And note that this is, is GDP. If we look at employment shares here, I have a number of comparison countries, but we have Uganda here at the far um, right. Um, in, if you look at employment, it really is uh, the, the informal sector again kind of completely dominates um, employment here. So looking at the tax register data, we're really looking at, at really very few people up here. But um, what, what I'm going to effectively assume that these people here 
are at the top. Um, so these, the formal sector activities um, essentially are, are, are a it, 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 as income ranges come and go, are a distinct subset. Um, um, that tax registers are going to be the, the people who are up here. Um, Uganda, this is unfortunately <laughs> the most relevant label is being cut off here, but this is Uganda. Um, so um, this, um, these are taken from uh, Widers Weed uh, data. There's uh, no observation on income inequality from Uganda. This is consumption inequality, but, it, but it, with its neighboring countries, it, it kind of has mid-level uh, inequality. It has been inching upwards possibly a little bit, but, but it's like mid-level. No dramatic things have taken place here. Yes? This is the whole distribution. This is weird. I'm just, in a sense, I'm placing Uganda in, in context of its of its neighboring countries. Um. Um, now, so since about 2009, Uganda Revenue Authority um, collects tax assessments um, electronically from from individuals and, in particular, from em em employers, and they do this using a kind of um, highly structured spreadsheet file, and I'll be using the the pairs you earn register, which is 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 the bulk of the information. Now, they do have tax identification uh, numbers, but it turns out, and of course, it's the individuals rather than the employers' tax identification numbers I'm in, interested in here. But but um, far from all employees have one. Um, so for many employers, do report uh, what. Um, they pay in wages and what they withhold in taxes from employees, but not all of those are equipped with with, pers with identifying information. And of course, uh, the fraction of the labor force that has a tax identification number also changes across years quite a bit, which is, is a problem. So the main information I use here is, is the monthly returns for each employee. The information is in principle quite rich, so so kind of lots of relevant inf information is um, filed for each employee within a firm that, that is a registered employer, um, uh, but on a monthly basis. There are also annual uh, returns, but there's, it's really a tiny, tiny fraction um, who actually file a, a, an annual um, return. So it's the pay as you earn the monthly data that are my, my main source of information. Um, so that's not particularly interesting. One of the main limitations is that I've, I have to try to, uh, I use the monthly information, but I aggregate it to an annual um, level, and I need to do some guessing of, of, of in order to, for those people who don't have a tax identification number, I have to do a little bit of guessing of, of, of who's who to get the aggregation approximately right within the year. I'm not claiming it's, it's perfect. There's a lot more work that needs to be done on that score. But I, but I do use, use a kind of algorithm and small variations in it doesn't change things a lot. But to get to top incomes, I need some additional things. One is I need control totals. I need to decide what the relevant target population is um, in what I report here, I, I take uh, the population as being the population of 15 to 74 year olds. Um, that's being a little generous at the high end of, of who belongs to the labor force, but, but I've decided that's, that's reasonable. I, I vary this a little bit, or we vary this a little bit, and it doesn't seem to uh, be, be a huge thing. And then for the income control total, what we do is that we take from the national accounts data is published by the Uganda um, Statistical Agency, the um, household final consumption expenditure. Again, we vary this to some extent. It doesn't seem to matter tremendously, but, but essentially I use these to construct the overall average, and then I use the tax register data to work out what the average income is of, of the not covered population, which uh, works as my, okay, that's the next equation here. This is not particularly enlightening, but all the same, um, these things we need to be able to figure out what, what the uh, top incomes are. The variations in these don't matter a lot, but, but that's what I do. All numbers I'm showing, I'll be, I've converted to um, USD uh, 
purchasing power parity adjusted United States dollars um, and expressed in, in 2017 prices using the Uganda Consumer Price Index. I converted to dollars just to be able to, to get some sense myself of what the numbers are rather than using Uganda shillings directly. Um, um, so this is, I'm, I'm just showing here the, um, what the aggregate uh, gross income, which is the income concept I'm using here, the gross income as aggregated from the tax registered as a fraction of uh, formal sector G GDP. Um, it rises from the beginning of the period, when 2011, it's a little less than 10%, um, and already in 2014, um, and then in 2018, it was around 15% of, of the overall. Um, the, I classify things like, so I look at fiscal years 2010 to 2017, the fiscal year runs from July to, to, to end of June, and, and it's indexed by, by, by the month, by the year in June, so this is 2016, July 2016 to, to, to June 2017. This is the overall um, average income um, per capita, uh, average income, that is income uh, per capita. This is the average for those who are not covered, essentially those who are uh, working mostly in the informal sector. This is uh, the formal sector GDP. It's considerably uh, higher, but, but in fact, the, the, uh, uh, this doesn't increase tremendously over the period. And, and, and in fact, it, it, it reflects the fact that the, the scope of taxation is increasing across time. So more and more of the population is, is being covered. So we see that the proportion of, of the population that's actually in the uh, tax registers goes from about 1.7% to 6.5% by the end of the period. So this is expanding quite rapidly. Um, this is now, these are the income shares I've had to work with unusually small quantile groups because, um, <laughs> because so little of the population is covered. So the, um, the fraction that, that in a sense works best over the whole period is um, the, the smallest, largest fraction that works the best over the whole period is the 1%. And you see here that the uh, overall share of the 1% goes from... Um, from what's this around uh, seven and a half percent to about twenty five percent over the period, we have a little bit of a, of, a, of an increase in the one one tenth of the um, one percent across time. Uh, the very very top um, does increase its its share also a little bit, but but I'll, I'll show you at the end one of the striking things which you can't see from these um, is that if you do this disjointly, it actually turns out that the uh, the the poorer majority of the 1% is actually increasing its share. So inequality within the 1% seems to be declining a little bit, while this, of course, suggests that inequality is increasing, at least in the top inequality sense. These are the average incomes measured here on the log scale. The choice of points here is very strange, of course, but all the same. Um, we see that there's kind of very rapid growth early on when the tax system kind of starts expanding through this, um, whether or not it's causal or not, but anyway, while the electronic stuff is, is expanding, we get a big increase. But then income evolution is reasonably flat uh, for the very top, as you see here in the red, um, and, and somewhat better for, for the top 1%. And this is, these are the disjoint shares. Well, I'm sorry. These are the disjoint shares. So this is now, this is the share, the blue line here is the share of the top 1% uh, to the, uh, um, what's it? less the uh, top one-tenth of a percent. So this is the share of uh, those who are below the top per miller. And, and that's increasing actually quite, quite rapidly, while the others are not so much. So I'm interpreting this as essentially that while top income inequality has been increasing over the period, um, it's actually kind of evening out. So it's not now the very, very richest who are doing all that well, but, but somewhat less so. Now, that brings me to the end um, of this. I'll in fact, I'm going to largely ignore my concluding remarks and just say that, that I'm hoping now to, to work. U Uganda has quite good uh, survey data. In fact, uh, different options, both a panel survey and a household survey. And in the panel survey, they actually ask if the employer pays withholding tax. 
Um, so it's possible to combine the survey data with these register data to try to assess the overall inequality. The years don't quite always coincide, so a little bit of fiddling will need to be done. But it does have the added benefit that there are good consumption and also, in fact, a reasonably well-measured set of, of income data in the survey data. So this, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful now that these can be used to, to, to also look, look at, at other questions that many of us also find interesting, like the overall uh, cross-sectional inequality, you also be able to actually look a little bit about at income inequality using both the survey and the register data, uh, income mobility to look at survey data um, combining the two sources. That's all. Thanks. Thank you.